Yo, what's going on, Konami USA? Kusa Pro here, Zach Magnuson. I am with... Uh, Kusa Pro, Benny Boy. And we are sitting down today to answer some of your guys' questions. So last week on Instagram for our weekly question, I made a post asking you guys the questions you wanted to ask us. And I have that post pulled up right here. And we are going to go ahead and just go down this list and answer some of the questions that you guys left for us. So we're going to start with uh, CK Dama's comment. His comment is favorite memory from filming Ben's pro edit. We definitely had a lot of different film sessions for that one. Um, I would say my favorite memory from that whole experience was just being out in Vegas filming with Ben. Uh, probably specifically at the, I think it's called the Seven, Seven Magic Mountains or something yeah, like that. Something like that. It was the, the location with all the rock statues, all the different colors. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of thought that about that film spot on the fly, and it just happened to be like 25 to 30 minutes away from Bish's place. And of all the times that Konami USA has been out filming in Vegas, we have never filmed at that location. And I feel like it also just kind of fit the whole vibe of just Ben's video being colorful. And we were already out there, so it worked out well. Yeah, I mean, my whole edit was amazing as it was just because it's you know your pro edit and your first one so the whole thing was amazing but if i were to pin it down to one moment i definitely say going to the hawkins lab um we basically went into that without knowing anything not knowing how strict it was and how um sketchy and just like very i don't know heavy on security there and like i was you know you can't really tell online but I was doing a lot of research and trying to find out everything about this building from the show. And then when me and Max pulled up, um, it was a lot less uh, sunshine and rainbows for sure. Um, just trying to get onto the property and filming was super like intimidating. But in the end, looking back, that was one of my favorite memories when it came to that pro edit for sure. The next question we're going to do here is from Kendama Ecuador. I believe Andy is his name running this out in Ecuador. So shout out Andy. Um, his question was, would you like to travel to South America? What do you like most about traveling with the Kusa squad? Much love from Ecuador. Much love. Absolutely would love to tra travel to South America. Um, don't know when or how or for what project, but if we figure that out, Mags is definitely down to go out to South America. Um, my favorite thing about traveling with the Kusa squad, honestly, is just kind of us like all being together. Um, obviously like the film sessions and all that stuff is fun and it's kind of what we all meet up to do but it's more so just kind of hanging out with it's a little family we got so we all we cook dinners together we go out to eat together we go do fun activities together outside of the filming and everything and it's just uh, it's not always about filming and stuff so I think I really just like being with the homies and going on these trips and seeing new cool places um, like the Idaho trip for example we did a lot of filming that trip, but we also just spent a lot of time just swimming and riding jet skis off camera and cooking a lot of food and eating meals together. So, like, those are probably my favorite moments from traveling, like, with the Kusa team, I would say. Yes. I don't think I've ever personally been to South America, so that would be really cool to be or a really cool place to go to. Um, the closest I've been was uh, Mexico, but that was in a resort, so I didn't really get to see, you know, fully what it was like to be there but I would love to go to South America that sounds really sick yeah I'd say like I'd agree with mags like other than just filming and having a really like high level uh group of people that play kendama um each person in that group is like some of my bestest friends ever and just being with everyone is one of the coolest and like most memorable experiences I have nowadays um it's such an amazing group of people and being able to hang out with them for long periods of time is a really amazing and fun thing to do. Um, so just hanging out with them, being able to talk about stuff and just do fun activities, especially in Idaho. Jet skis is probably the, one of the most memorable things that I we did. Idaho trip's everyone's favorite trip. Idaho trip was amazing. Let's, uh, we're gonna answer Joe Nelson's question. It <laughs> says, uh, where you hope to be in Kendama in five years? I still feel like just playing Kendama, affiliated with Kendama USA, traveling, making pro models, filming videos, 
Like, not much different from what I'm doing now, to be honest with you. Maybe just a little less, like, full-time Kendama, but, I mean, I, I plan on Kendama being a pretty big part of my life for a long time to come, for sure. So in five years, I mean, I've only been playing for about five years, so that was already a huge uh, change for me. I mean, from first playing and then going to where I am now was huge. So it's kind of hard to think of, you know, where I want to be five years from now. Um, but, I mean, I guess I'd hit, like, a decade mod or something like yeah, that, 10 years. Year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, but I would just like to continue to do what I'm doing at the uh, consistency that I'm doing it. I'd like to get a little bit better at videography and photography personally. And, you know, that would be really cool to see where I go in five years. Um, and then in Kendama, I definitely want to get some titles under my under yeah. me, yeah. like, I'm not the best at competing, and I'm really trying to figure it out, and I just believe that I don't have a lot of the experience that a lot of people have, so I'd love to, you know, get some more exposure and be able to maybe get some get some wins here soon. All right, next question is from mt.crane, and his question is, how do y'all brush off a bad sesh? Um, I feel like bad sessions happen to everybody, no matter what level of kendama you're in. You have good days and you have bad days. I don't know about like fully brushing it off. I feel like to an extent, whenever I have a really bad session and walk away empty handed, I'm a little bummed out still leaving the session. But I feel like the way I get around that is to plan the next day I want to go out and film and attempt to land the trick again. Um, the one thing that I also tell myself too about really bad sessions is even if you don't land anything, you're still getting a lot of practice in, especially if you're pushing like a two, three hour session. Um, Cause usually tricks involve more than just one trick in the trick. So X, Y, and Z, for example, you're practicing those three aspects of the trick. So it could be like a triple J stick or it could be a double tap or a down spike fast hand. So if you're starting the trick with a triple tap and it you try the trick over a thousand times, you're going to be super down on triple taps after leaving that session. And the next time you go back in to try and get that trick, it's probably going to be a lot more successful than your first time. Um, I think the value of knowing when to walk away, too, is very important. I know Kendama is this thing, and we don't want to let this thing beat us. Uh, but sometimes it just doesn't work out, man, you know? <laughs> sometimes you gotta take the L go home and recoup and plan another day to go land it yeah I definitely go home and cry um, <laughs> take a nap no I'm kidding um, yeah I mean it's a it's a very good question too just cause I think everyone that plays Ganama has to deal with it and that's something that even if you get better and you get more consistent with tricks you're always wanting tricks that are harder than your, are, than your skill level um, so it's just, it's like always going to be like that. But for me personally, um, I will say I agree with Max saying, um, you know, the more that you're out there, you're getting practice with the trick. Um, cause you know, every time you go for the trick, you're getting that much closer to landing it. Um, uh, and you know, so there's that. And then also I just, I also honestly replan to film another day. And I don't believe that, you know, if I have a bad session, it's not happening ever or it's not going to happen. It's just you got to be patient and just know that eventually, you know, you're going to land it. It's just it's a matter of time. <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> All right, next question is from Alex Alvarado, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, his question is, need a least favorite trick list? Inward stilts, for sure, for me. I'm terrible at them. Ring stall, I feel like everyone will probably give you that answer. Uh, like regular stunt plane flips. Uh, trying to get better at those, definitely like one of, not on my favorite list though, for sure. Um, shout out Johnny Crest for the tutorial. Goon circles, I really don't like doing goon circles that much. It's not that I don't like the trick, it's just not really my vibe, so I haven't really touched on those too much. Yeah, for me, ring stall, definitely. I don't think I've ever done a ring stall trick in my entire life. I can't do tightrope. Yeah, I don't like tightrope. I, I can't do it. It's not happening. Tightropes are tough. <laughs> yeah, and I mean we all glue our spikes nowadays, so yeah. it's you got to pick your poison on that trick. I can't do moon circle. I just can't do it. I don't know why. But yeah, so the biggest culprit I guess for tricks that I struggle with is anything fundamental. So like triple lighthouse flip, triple uh, J stick, anything that's like 
you should have learned like developing into kendama i just skipped over since i was looking to videos like mag's videos um, and alex mitchell doing tap tricks and juggles so i'm significantly better at those but like if in a trick list there's some like one two three lighthouse flip i just can't do it i'm struggling for sure our next question is from keely bryan shout out uh ben's little sister <laughs> Twin, actually. Twin sister. Twin sister. Uh, Keely's question is, what is something that you have learned from each other, either with Kendama, life, etc.? Um, the main thing that Ben has taught me, it doesn't matter how long you've been playing Kendama, and it doesn't matter how good you think you are at Kendama, the new generation is coming to play. <laughs> <laughs> These kids, I don't know where they come from, I don't know how they get so good so fast. <laughs> But as I said earlier, I've been playing Kendama for 10 years, and Ben's been playing Kendama for five years, and he can probably do every trick that I can do. <laughs> so definitely being humble is something I definitely learned from Benny Boy and continue to learn from Benny Boy. Something else I learned from Benny is just having fun. This kid's always having fun no matter what we're doing. We could be having a bad day or a bad session or something, and Ben's just always bringing the, the light to the situations. Team trips, like film sessions, uh, anything around there um, but yeah it's hard to start for mags I mean ever since I started playing Kendama he was a huge inspiration watching his videos uh, as I developed kind of my own um, style of play I definitely took a lot of inspiration through the way that I played Kendama and then I loved watching his videos but especially when it came to videography I was heavily inspired I mean I'm actually going to school for videography and it's a hundred percent because of him um, I just remember going to those first few trips where I could watch him film everything and just see his creativity and drive take place. And it was very inspirational for me. And it just led me to want to, you know, turn that into a career, no matter how far away that is. Next question is from Bron Dallasine, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, his question is, how do you control the string? I feel like the more I think about it, the more I freaking get tangled. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, man, the string is always going to be a problem. To be honest with you, string will always be an issue, especially in longer combos. Um, the one piece of advice that I can probably give to help out a little bit is to try and slow your trick down a little bit. Um, I know Kendama is like a super fast paced thing, but I think if you just use a little bit more knee and a little bit more height and really try and slow down what you're doing, um, I do think it helps a little bit without it being rushed. I feel like whenever I rush my trick or rush into a trick, um, I usually end up getting pretty tangled up. Yeah, for me, I have like a cool trick that I kind of found out, and I know uh, Isaac went kind of in on it and found out what I did. Shout out, Isaac. Um, but personally, there's like two things I'd say. Um, as you play Kendama, usually without even thinking about it, you start to develop a tolerance for string tangles. Uh, I know talking to a few uh, Kanama players, like Alex Mitchell um, and myself, we get a lot of comments on this, and it, sometimes it can be hard to even answer just because we don't know how it happens. But I think as you play Kendama, you start to adjust your entire playing style, and it starts to cater for less string tangles. Uh, but personally, uh, especially when it comes to like late Ken flips, um, I will send the Tama up really high so that there's less slack in the string, which allows less tangles. Like if you're doing a late Ken flip, like late treble Ken flip right next to the Tama, there's all that string slack that can get caught up in the Ken while it's doing it. And if you send the Tama up really high and kind of far away from the Ken, it won't create that much slack. All right, next question is from Marcus Lander. Shout out Marcus. Yeah. Um, Kendama pet peeves. Um, <laughs> String, <laughs> uh, wind for sure, wind, uh, flat spikes, um, chip base cups, knots in your string. Dogs barking at you while you're trying to film. Yeah, personally, I'll agree with everything that Mag says, but um, a few things that stand out to me is definitely chip base cups. Um, it sucks. You don't even really want to play the Kendama anymore. Uh, I remember when I started playing, trying to glue that crap back on, did not work. <laughs> um, so those aren't fun. Um, the paint, 
uh, adjusting to temperature and environments is crazy. We're currently in Charleston and we've been filming our project here and the paint plays completely different here than it does back home in Kentucky and Nashville. Um, and it's, it's very unfortunate that it's super reactive to the, um, to the environment, um, but that's just how it is. All right, last question here. We're gonna do Kevin Soto's comment. Uh, shout out Kevin. His comment is biggest inspirations for Kendama, life and film slash photography. Um, for Kendama, my biggest inspos are definitely just like some of the older guys that are still out ripping and competing. Um, Kevin, honestly, he's one of them. Um, Kevin has taught me a lot through Kendama and just him still being able to podium after so many years of playing, like it gives me hope that I ha can do this for quite some time still. And he's still super passionate about it and eager to get up there and do it. So Kevin's definitely a big inspo for me. Um, the old Kenko crew, honestly, like Bonds, Bosch, um, those two guys like have always been big inspo. Um, I was definitely a Kenko kid back in the day. So like seeing Bosch to this day do some of the craziest Kendama tricks that like nobody else is doing, again, just gives me motivation and hope that they're, these people are a bit older than me. So it, it's cool to see that I still have time to do what we all do. Um, I feel like that's like one of the biggest things that everyone asks is like, how long do you think you're going to be playing Kendama for? Um, yeah, I'm probably playing Kendama until I, my knees won't let me play Kendama, if I'm being honest. Um, but for film and photography, um, I'll just kind of talk about the Kendama resemblance here because that's just Coos channel. Um, definitely like Colin, Colin Sander, Jake Weens, um, Brian Skagline. Um, these are three guys just before I even really started shooting video, just really paying attention to how they move, how they create, how they shoot, how they pick locations, how they edit. Um, some of like the older style Kusa videos is like really what I take inspiration from on some of the work that I do today. Um, don't try to make the same thing, but just keep the, the Kusa videos have always had like a good vibe, good team aspect to them. Um, so I've just kind of been trying to carry on the torch, but, uh, Tej too, shout out TJ. They've all done insane things for the cinematography side of Kendama. Um, they're all great photographers, editors, everything, anything related to media. Um, definitely look at those guys for sure. Over the years, and I still do. Um, oh, actually, I will bring in one outside source for my videography. Um, look, go watch Zimmy the Kid on YouTube or Instagram. Um, his stuff's insane. A lot of editing inspo from him. A lot of the way that I shoot comes from him. Um, but yeah, shout out Zimmy. I guess for life, I don't really have like specific specifics, um, but as like a general, I'll just say the Kendama community as a whole. Um, I think such a niche thing and uh, the amount of people who are in our community being down to do it and put themselves out in the public and not care what anybody else thinks is super inspirational for me even being in the game for so long and i'm sure for people getting into it it's just a way to teach you to really not care what other people think about what you do and to just kind of do what you love regardless um, so shout out the kendama community um, y'all have taught me so much over the years just through life in general so shout out the community uh yeah so for videography i already said obviously mags um huge inspiration just the movement i mean the the feelings and the emotions that you can feel watching the stuff that he creates um is truly remarkable and i just would love to maybe one day have the same um give the same feeling to people watching my stuff um and then kendama um definitely there's a few like bigger people that I'd watch when, like nowadays and when I was getting started. People like D, uh, D. Westy, Alex Mitchell, Mags being one of them again. <laughs> uh, who else was there? I've been with Benny Boy since the start, man. Yeah, he's <laughs> we, we, yeah. He, he's the one that found me from yeah. the depths of Instagram. <laughs> so, Boy yeah. had 200 followers. I literally I stuck at 200. No one knew who I was. Um, but yeah, people like that, very good Kanama players and like probably like the biggest names of like 2019 that I continue to watch were like people that I would look up to. But like D. Westy, Alex and um, Mags, definitely big three for sure. And then uh, when it comes to life, 
Mags again. <laughs> yeah, he's the champ right now, huh? <laughs> uh, definitely Mags, uh, just because of everything that he's done for me, and I think the relationship that I've grown with him, uh, for sure. And then another one that comes up is my grandpa. I call him Paps. We love Paps. Shout, uh, out, Paps. shout, out, Paps. shout out Paps. Mags met Paps at Battle of the Border, and I'm sure if you were at Battle, you saw him with my like his homemade Benny Boy T-shirt. Um, but he's one of the nicest people uh, that I know, if not the nicest. And he's been with me ever since I started, ever since I played yo-yo, wanting me to become a yo-yo pro. Um, he's just one of the most supportive individuals in my life. And he's been, he's been there for me all the time, no matter what. And I owe it all to him. But also, on my pro mod, my little paintbrush, I don't know if anyone knows what that is, but that's actually for my grandpa. He paints, so... I wanted to do a little, little um, symbolism yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that's my that's my big three for sure. All right, that is going to conclude uh, the Mags and Benny Q and A. Um, go buy a Benny Boy mod and a Mags Ten Year mod live now on Kendom USA. And if you guys enjoyed this video and think that we should do more stuff like this, um, let us know. This is kind of a first for us. We're just branching off a little bit so uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this one and we will see you on the next one